Lightroom Wizards. All right, uh, welcome to Lightroom Wizards. Uh, today we are going to look at graduated filters. Graduated filters, definitely one of the coolest tools in Lightroom. I know I say that about every tool, but this is the one when I discovered how to use them and what they were. I, it totally tra transformed my processing and just made life so much easier. So I think if you've never used them before, by the end of this short tutorial, you're going to be like, wow, how come I didn't know about those before? And you're going to start using them all the time. And even if you do use them, hopefully you learn something new here, which is some of the different ways in which you can use them. Seriously, you can use them in so many different ways. We're not going to cover absolutely every way you can use them, but hopefully you discover something new. So first of all, graduated filters. That's this button right here in the toolbar. Now, for those of you who shoot landscape photos, especially if you're a fairly serious landscape photographer, chances are you've already used graduated or gradient filters sometime in your work. Basically, in the world of real life photography, and not that working in Lightroom is not real life, but uh, when you're out there shooting in the field, when you use a, a graduated filter, it's um, a square filter that goes over your lens, and generally it has a darker area to the filter and then a lighter area, which allows you to expose uh, an image longer than you might not be able to because the darker area of the filter holds back bright areas like a sky. So here in Lightroom you have a tool that mimics that but it actually gives you a lot of other control options other than just exposure and we're going to get into those. And so if you look at this image right here, it's my little boy Luke um, and I love the shot, I love his expression, everything else, but if I look at this image one of the biggest things that kind of jumps out to me as a flaw in the image or something that I'd like to correct is right up here in the sky, it's blown out. I mean, in order to for me to expose his face properly, I'm overexposing what I'm seeing with my eye right in, in that scene, which is a fairly nice blue sky. I mean, the clouds are bright, but they're not totally washed out like that. So right here, I have this area of my image that I know I want to correct. So the way graduated filters work, when you click on them, um, it gives you a whole bunch of different control options here. But let's just start with exposure, which is basically what um, graduated or gradient filters do in real life. They control exposure. Now, the way you use these is, let me just kind of set these to zero, so you're not going to notice anything happen when I actually put it on this image to start with, but I'll get to that. So right here, you basically pick an area of the picture that you want to change. So right here, I know right there is the area I want to change. So to use these, I click with my mouse from the area I want to change and then down. Or I could go left to right or up, up, sorry, bottom to top, and so on and so forth. But right here, I'm going to go from top down. So I click on here and I drag. And you can see that graduated filter appear there. And you notice it's split into two, and there's a couple lines there. I'll get into that in a second. But right there, I'm going to put that graduated filter just, say, over half my image. Now, you notice nothing has changed yet, and that's because all of these things here are set to zero. But now I can go in, and I can change these. And basically what it does, I'm going to do this really extreme first, not how I'd actually process, but just so you can see, I bring the exposure way down. It totally brings that exposure down on the top area of my picture or I can go super bright but obviously I don't want to do either of those so right here I would probably want to bring that down a bit so if I bring that down a bit notice where it's now punching that blue back into my image and I just find an area that I kinda of like I don't want it too extreme and I don't want his forehead to be too dark but right there that brings some some blue back into it um, I can do other things with that graduated filter too, and this is kind of the beauty of using them in Lightroom. What you can't really do in real life is I have all these other control options available to me. So right there, I made it a bit bluer, um, but I think that my shadows here are a little bit too dark. I would like to see more detail there. So on the same graduated filter, I can now go and pull out shadows. You see that? So now all of a sudden I've got green showing in those trees. It doesn't look as dark and it's also lightening up the shadow on his face. So I might even be able to pull that down a li little bit more, bring a little more blue into that sky, bring my shadows up just a bit more, and there we go. Now we have way more balance. And, I mean, the sky's the limit. You can do as many of these options on one graduated filter as you want, or 
I can create separate graduated filters. So for example, if I click off this and click on it again, I can create a new one. And maybe this time I want to work on just the saturation. Maybe I want to punch a little bit more blue into that top area and in the green in the trees. So I'm going to go to saturation. See where it goes to minus 43 here, but you can change it to whatever you want. Again, I'm just going to start at zero. I mean, I don't have to use this drop down. If you start at zero, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. Um, but I'm going to create another one here. Basically the same thing. I'm going to drag it over the same area. And now let me just crank up the saturation. So see where that pumps up a lot of blue into that image. Now, I don't like it looking too fake. I want to just kind of more match what my eye saw in that scene, but my camera didn't quite record. So if I increase that saturation just a bit, that punches some nice blue into there. Now I'm going to click off that. And I'll just show you before and after here. We're using those two gradient filters. So I'm going to press the backslash key on my keyboard. Um, just that will show you your image before you made any changes. So if I go there, so before, after, before, after. Dramatic difference. And just with two quick filters. I mean, if I wasn't explaining while doing that, that would have taken me literally maybe 15 seconds of editing to do that. Um, so very, very powerful. Um, other things that you might want to do with a, a graduated filter. Um, you don't have to go top down. You can go bottom up. Maybe say in this area, I want increased clarity or sharpness. I want this to pop a little bit more. This area is kind of falling off into um, out of focus anyway, so no big deal. So let me just go right here, and I'm going to choose clarity. And clarity by default goes to plus 54, and let's just see what that looks like. I'm going to pull it from the bottom up. And what clarity does is it really makes lines stand out. It kind of gives them more contrast. And I'll show you extreme here. So this is turning down, makes it really soft. This is super edgy, which I think looks fake. But let me just somewhere right about there. Gives a little more pop. And I might even just pull the shadows down below just a bit more. Okay, there we go. So again, let me do a before and after on that. So I'm touching two different areas with that those uh, graduated filters. I've got three graduated filters total on there, but dramatically different images. And I, I would argue a much more improved image at using those. Uh, let's look at a different image. So let me hop over here. I've got two different images shot in actually the same week as the other one. This is in Maui. And let's just take a look at this one. So right here, sunset scene, and this is a kind of a typical problem that your camera has when shooting areas of high contrast. The camera does not see the way the human eye does. It sees in a lesser range of light. So even though with my eye I'm seeing kind of a sunset happening there and I'm seeing into those rocks down below, uh, my camera picks it up as shadow. So if I don't use a graduated filter actually on the spot, which I generally try to do, again, I always try to get things right in camera, but I know that I can save this in Lightroom. So here, I'm just going to fix that tilt very quickly because that's driving me nuts. Make that a little more straight. Okay, here we go. So right here, very shadowed. So I'm going to pick a graduated filter. And I'm, for this one, going to just go to shadows. So I'm going to pull out the shadows a bit and probably the exposure just a bit. And I'm going to drag that from bottom up. Let's just see what happens. And look at that. All of a sudden, I'm bringing in a lot more detail. Let's just go a little bit more and see how far we can push this. A um, little bit of clarity. Clarity tends to really bring out shadowed areas nicely, too. And there we go. Look at that. I had, before that, can press my backslash key, basically a boring, unusable image. And now, all of a sudden, I've got something with interest and drama. Um, and I, I would do probably more edits to this well as well. I'd probably bring down the exposure up above here, just the highlights. Actually, let's do that. So I'm going to go to the graduated filter, and I'm for this one, whoops, I'm just going to choose highlights, and I'm going to bring them down. So I don't want this bright area to be quite as bright. Let's see if this makes any difference. So that tones it down a bit. I think that's a bit too far. Right about there is nice. But here's the other really cool thing too. Um, this scene was actually warmer to my eye. My um, uh, camera rendered it in auto white balance a little bit on the cool side. So I can selectively, in an area, punch up white balance using graduated filters as well. Let's just create a new white balance filter for that. Click on there. Let's go to white balance. 
temperature, there we go. And I'm going to say give it more warmth and maybe just a little bit of magenta. Pull that from the top down. And see, I can go skinny or I can go across the whole image so that it's what graduated filter means is it's stronger on the top and it gradually gets lighter. So the effect of this is going to be most pronounced in this area and it's going to get weaker right here. And I can kind of move that around too. I can make, uh, I can rotate it. So if you have an image that's very specific, um, you can rotate it any way you want and make it skinnier. And make, but, so right there, let me just go more extreme here. So I'm going to punch in more warmth up above give it a bit more saturation um, now that's even got more color say if you don't want to mess around with white balances sometimes white balance can give things a little bit of a weird color shift you can also do a graduated color filter too and let me just try that so can I go right there can I just kind of reset everything back to zero here let me just bring that back down to zero and I'm creating a new filter and this time I'm going to go right here to color and let's just say we want to, I don't know, let's just give this a bit of a magenta tone. We could change this afterwards if we don't like it. Do, do, do. Or let's make it more of a sunset-y kind of color. Let's go right there. Let's just see what that looks like. Might be too strong. And I'm going to drag that from top down. Now all of a sudden I've brought way more color into there. And it's just up to you and your eye and what you consider looks good or fake. Um, again, my goal always with my edits is that things look fairly natural. Um, I never want it to look too over the top. It's just more kind of bringing your picture to what you remember seeing. But, I mean, it's up to you. Different people have different preferences. So if I do that, now that image, before, after, before, after, dramatically different. And, again, if I wasn't explaining while doing this, I bet you all those edits would have taken less than 60 seconds. Really quick. Um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial on graduated filters and just go play with them. I mean there's a lot of things here I didn't cover. There's a whole bunch of different options in here and you can bring them left to right. If this was a portrait and I had a person right here and this area is way overexposed, again you can bring it from right to left and just tone that down. I mean really there's so many different ways you can use graduated filters but I hope this gives you a good idea or a starting point and I hope you have a lot of fun. Thank you.